All right, and we're going to go live now to Maria Butina, member of the Russian State Duma International Affairs Committee, who joins me live. Uh, Maria, good to have you on the program with us. As I just mentioned there, Trump declared himself the next president of the United States, even though the official results aren't um, out yet. Uh, do you think that this is game over for Harris at this stage? Absolutely. I mean, that she had a, just one chance to run and uh, her political career is over now. And whoever was going to be instead of her would lose to Trump. And so she uh, sacrificed her full political career and actually uh, the women's uh, leadership as well, because the second time in a row a woman loses the elections of the United States that actually makes its agenda on the female uh, human rights. That's that's kind of ironic, I think. But uh, talking of Trump, well, we should just, you know, agree that people had uh, a chance to express their will and they did it and we see the results. So uh, supposedly uh, they want peace. Uh, they want a econ good economy in the United States and they do not support the current uh, things, uh, how they go in. So I think it's it was quite predictable, but nobody knew for sure because the uh, situation in the United States uh, was so unstable. And uh, we saw that the campaign was very, very intense, involving a lot of money and a lot of different actions that the candidates were doing. So, uh, well, wonderful that people expressed what they think and they they are going to make America great again, I guess. So, uh, Maria, I, I know that last month you suggested Democrats may resort to fraud in order to propel Harris to victory. Now, there have been allegations on both sides of voter fraud. It does look as though Trump will secure a, a decisive victory if, if the uh, results do end up being um, confirmed. Do you think that this could still happen, that the Democrats could challenge this with such a decisive victory by Trump? Well, we had we got a history lesson when last time uh, everything was uh, in place uh, for Biden to lose, and suddenly we see a jump on the chart. Um, so nobody uh, would guarantee this time that we will, the whole world won't see this embarrassing jump uh, in the chart. Hopefully, hopefully they're not going to do it, but I do still predict there going to be instability and people probably will go on the streets to express their disagreement or agreement with their things, what just happened, because it, 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 it's a very emotional campaign and the whole world was watching it. Uh, but the main point that we shall be focusing now for, I mean, in, in, the, in the global perspective, is the fact that... Um, uh, what, how Trump is going to uh, end wars that he promised in two days. And uh, uh, he has been talking, just uh, let me remind you, about Ukraine and Russia and Israel and Palestine. Um, at least uh, him moving in that direction would be great because I don't know the precedents in the history of when some leader would, you know, end and create peace just in a, such a short term. Uh, I would love to believe, and Russia has always been open to negotiate and uh, our president has been talking about this over and over again, but there was nobody on that side, on the other side, who is ready to, to sit and uh, actually honestly talk about the future world uh, when Russia wins the special military operation. Uh, Maria, apart from the presidential election, uh, Democrats are projected to lose the Senate. Now, if you recall, it was in 2022, the Democrats uh, performed much better than expected in the midterm elections. So what do you think went, went wrong for them this time around in their campaigns? Uh, just economy. People, people vote for the current power, current leaders in charge only if they like what's going on around. But I understand Americans, uh, many of those are wonderful people and they're great families. So they see that they have to pay for their gas on a gas station three times more. They have to go to a grocery store and save money because they they not afford, they cannot afford food for their kids. So the people are not least, least interested in, a, in foreign affairs. They're interested how they're going to feed their kids. And so I think the big biggest loss of the Democrats was that their campaign was so outside of the what people really need because they were campaigning all the transgender issues on the uh, international affairs on whatever except 
for uh, what people actually are voting for. Let's say, okay, uh, immigration issue. This is what worries uh, every American. But uh, Kamala did, did do nothing on that. She actually compromised the whole field of the immigration services, and we saw the whole world saw uh, the, such a shameful her appearance on the border with Mexico at the beginning of the Biden's uh, presidential term. So they just they did nothing uh, in terms of who uh, was better during the campaign. I'd say who was worse. I, actually, they had the same problem uh, last time when Hillary lost to Trump because. That was not now. It's Trump's victory. Those days, there was no such a so much Trump's victory. It was Hillary's lose, and now uh, they made Trump extremely popular because Harris is just extremely unpopular. That's that is it. Yeah, it certainly is a much different tone uh, to 2016. Uh, I want to go back to what you mentioned a few uh, moments ago about Trump saying that he will not get America into more wars, focusing on America first, and of course saying that he'll end the Ukraine conflict within 24 to 48 hours. Um, do you think that we should believe him, at least based on his first term? Where I mean, he did, in fact, not get America into more wars during his first term and, and did um, pull America out of um, many conflicts. But do you think that we uh, should take him at his word that he will um, get America or or end the, the conflict in Ukraine and, and as well as the, the conflicts in Gaza? Trust but verify. That's it. Meaning that we hope and at this time, uh, okay, past time he might have had obstacles because all of this investigation of the, the possible collusion between Trump and Russia that led to two reports that actually said there was no collusion between Trump and Russia. But anyway, okay, this time he has no obstacles, the full support of the country, and we very much hope that he is going to be a peaceful president as, as he promises and he will be focused as any leader should be on his own country it's sovereign sovereign interest and on the people so if he keeps the five percent of his promises uh, on the campaign i would be very happy for the every single american and every single american family who actually supported uh, him for the upcoming term what do you think a trump victory will mean for u.s russia relations i, I know Putin uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek endorsed Kamala Harris saying that she has this infectious laugh. But do you think that relations will at least Im improve under a Trump presidency? Uh, very much hope that Trump will be rational uh, and understand that the uh, situation on Ukraine is, is over for Ukraine and he will just, you know, withdraw all the resources that he gives today to the... Uh, uh, the, to the failed state, to the failed war, and uh, he will be focused on developing his own country. And uh, Russia will win anyway. Uh, just uh, this is the time to start negotiations. And uh, Russia has been talking about this since day one, saying like, okay, we're well, we, we going to win, let's talk. Um, but uh, unfortunately, there was no desire from the other side. And uh, the Ukraine conflict was used in the United States to get, kind of gain popularity for the Democrats. And as we see, people did not like it very much. That's why they gave the victory to President Trump. All right. We'll leave it there. Maria Butina, member of the Russian State Duma International Affairs Committee. Maria, thank you.